Martin deserves all the love, Dr. Marjorie Dixon. You deserve the love because you're one of our beloved experts on the show, of course, but you've also been named one of the YWCA Toronto's Women of Distinction for 2017. So it's a big deal. I'm having like a mama moment. Your, your, your mom must be so happy. Yeah, she told me don't let it go to my head. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag black mom. Hashtag to make a mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hear you, girl. Um, yeah. one, the one thing they said about you and I thought was really cute, Marjorie, not cute, it's lovely. Marjorie leads by example and, and never misses an opportunity to mentor young female doctors or speak to young women about their reproductive health and sexual safety. In the world we're living in right now, I can't say enough about women like you that are leading the charge when it comes to this. With women's health, you're getting us to pay attention mm -hmm. to what's happening in our bodies. And to be advocates, we have to speak out for ourselves. Absolutely. If we're not speaking out for ourselves, who is going to speak out for us? So thank you so much for everything you do. It's we love pleasure. you. We're so thank proud you. of you. <laughs> thank so you. So proud of you. to be able to have a platform to make a difference in women's lives and I never imagined I mean I went into medicine to help people yes. and then I went into women's health because it was my passion but uh -huh. then to have and even thank you to Citilite to have a public forum to be able to inform and educate women so we can be empowered in our own health care it's amazing beautiful the relationship that works for all of us particularly our viewers so we love that so let's talk about all this good stuff in your brain that you help us with all the time <laughs> when you're here it's colon cancer awareness month yeah so we are gonna focus right now on colorectal rectal cancer just because you know we should talk about it but also there's a, a recent study that right. it's somewhat alarming in the um, journal of the National Cancer Institute yes yeah. so what what are what's the information coming well, out we now? don't want to alarm people but we want to inform people so yes. there's it, you know traditionally we think about colon cancer as a, a man's cancer we do yeah well it's the second leading cancer diagnosis in Canada and the third leading um, cause of cancer death in women in women in Canada yeah. why don't we vote why don't we think about women uh, it's not that we don't think about it but tr unfortunately traditionally medicine talks about men's problems it's just the way it is right now that there are more women doctors and now that we're doing the proper studies where we segregate out the women and the men we see that it's something that impacts but more importantly the study showed that we traditionally look at colon cancer as something that happens in older people so we mm -hmm. begin the screening after age 50 and that was well documented you know medical literature established precedent mm -hmm. and also we know that they're good screening tests so a screening test is something that has the ability to pick something up really early in its development okay. and then has the ability to prevent disease significantly because it's a prevalent issue so like cervical cancer we can screen for it with a pap test and prevent illness mm -hmm. well now we have colon cancer that we screen for and prevent but it traditionally is in older people and younger people now they're seeing what the study showed was that in people between the ages of 20 and 54 that there's an increasing incidence mm -hmm. whereas everywhere else in older people there's a decreasing incidence of oh, cancer. Oh interesting. I know. Is but that not, because of the screening test? No, it's, well it's also because the younger people don't get screened because it's not traditionally prevalent in yeah. that group of people. Um, it's not clear as to why it's happening but I, I, I should caution people that what the study did show and it's one study yeah. but what it did show was that it it's going up at a rate of one to two cases per 100,000, mm -hmm. whereas the prevention in people over the age of 50, it's diminished by up to 100 cases per 100,000. Oh. So, I know. So much as it's important to be aware and to be cognizant and maybe to be more critical, well, why is this happening now? Right. Whereas in every other age group over the age of 50, it's going down significantly. It has maybe something to do with our diets maybe. and lifestyle. because Environment. When when you diet. think about the risk factors around colon cancer. So colon cancer, what it is, it's cancer of the colon. So we have, what does the colon do? It, I hate to say it, but it's a, a fancy fecal processing plant. Yes. So you, the, <laughs> the small intestine you absorb your nutrients from, and then the large intestine um, absorbs the water and some salt and pushes it along through the ascending, transverse, descending colon and the sigmoid colon and then out the rectum. Okay. So in, it's, it's cancers of that particular organ. It's like an inverted U shape. And if you imagine, it goes up and around and down mm -hmm. and out. So fine. So the, it's cancer of those tissues. Yeah. Now, we screen for those things by two means. One is the fetal occult blood test. So um, when people are over 50 annually, you go to your family doctor for your visit, and then they give you a thing you go home with, and you have a little scooper, and three days in a row you test your 
Your stool. Yeah, your stool. Mm -hmm. And then you send it back in to see if there's any blood in it. There's also a newer test called the fe uh, fecal immunohistochemical test, mm -hmm. which is also the same thing. That's easy to say. I know, say it three times fast. <laughs> Except it tests for also blood in your stool, okay. and you only have to do one sample, it's a little brush. So it's a different way of doing it, okay. but you can do that annually, and if there's blood in stool, that's one of the, the heralded signs and symptoms of colon cancer is to have blood in your stool. So this is a, so all, are all the screeners things you have to do at home? Well, well, or in, by yourself. By yourself. Yeah, because you have home, to be able and to. And then take... you have to submit the samples. Exactly. So that's okay. and that you can do annually as a screen to look for the number one sign of colon cancer, which is blood in your stool. Mm -hmm. The other one that we all know about is after age 50, we recommend that you have a colonoscopy. colonoscopy. So the colonoscopy is where a flex flexible camera mm -hmm. is put up. Um, the sigmoid and up the right hand. They have a shorter one, which is just a sigmoid oscopy, but it only looks for the lower end, and that one should be done every five years if you're not able to do the colonoscopy. But really, they tell you to empty your bowel, so you either drink stuff or put stuff up or evacuation first. Got to be clean. Because you can't out. put it exactly. And then what you're looking, they're looking for initially are polyps. Right. Because they begin in polyps. Traditionally, the most common co um, type of colon cancer is something called an adenocarcinoma, a glandular-based carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Often they begin slowly in little polyps. So um, it's important if you ad they identify polyps, then you take them out. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are at risk, and one of the risk factors is all the stuff you talk about on City Line is obesity. E eating a uh, Marilyn Smith always talks about fiber diets. High fiber diets are important because that lubricates your stool so you can get it out, okay. right? Um, uh, being overweight, obesity increases mm -hmm. the chances. If you drink mm -hmm. more than one glass of alcohol a day, all mm -hmm. of these are risk factors. So we're understanding in medicine, um, if you have an ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel syndrome, ulcerative yep. colitis and Crohn's disease, anything that has irritated the bowel on a regular basis that can cause early dysmorphic changes and then actual changes to cancer and tumor growth yes. are things that can predispose to having colon cancer. So it can be, it's 90% preventable if detected early. Detected early and dealt with early. Do we need to start detecting this more early then? What do we need to do? Like, well, what's that, our takeaway here? Well, the jury's still here? out. We can't do okay. it. The, right. the jury's still be out on top as much. Of your be on top. If you have changes in your bowel habits that last for four weeks or greater, yeah. if you're currently constipated and it doesn't give up, have a look into it. Go talk to your family doctor. Maybe you need to be screened earlier. Got that it. might be the takeaway, but we don't know why it's happening. Good information. Thank you. Thank you you're for arming welcome. us with that.